Hi everyone, so I prepared this mini lecture just to give more insight on this week's topics because they're not easy to grasp on the first go. You will learn more and more as we bring these concepts up again and again from different angles to help you understand why Latinx and Chicanx representations in US mass media are directly related to our colonial past and the formation or invention of both our Latin American nations and the United States. So for example, the way we are represented negatively as criminals and people who can only hold service jobs in U.S. mass media is also related to the way in which telenovelas love to represent the main characters as white and the bad or lesser characters as indigenous or black. So how is this so? Uh, because they're both functioning under a hierarchical way of seeing the world. Hierarchical means that people, places, things, concepts are organized in your mind by an order of rank from what you may think is best or better to what you may think is less, worse, or just negative or bad. Think of the shape of a pyramid. And this way of thinking is very limited. It is binary thinking, very black or white and oversimplified. In this way of thinking, there are closed and static concepts of what is good or bad beautiful versus ugly, and in order to think in this way or for it to be logical for you, you have to give privilege to certain perspectives or points of view. For example, if I love dark stuff and I'm into the whole goth subculture and music, I can find black clothes, dark makeup, and allusions to death fascinating and closer to my concept of love. I can think that anything that is pink and kawaii is stupid and not deep vain. So in that sense, then, I will organize all around me under that premise, right? Where I am already thinking negatively of or lesser of that which I perceive as opposite of goth, kawaii in this case. But what if that is all part of binary thinking and in reality, we could make the argument that kawaii has actually more to do with goth than with any other way of being that does not follow any subcultural trend. When I ask this question, I'm asking you to be more critical and think about your perspective in a more complex way. No longer are you bound by the binary thinking that kawaii and goth are polar opposites. That way of seeing things is in our mind. It is how we are deciding to see things in a moment. Well, this is kind of what happened when European settlers came to the Americas and also when they went to Africa. In their brains, they created an opposition between themselves and the people who were already inhabiting the lands. They did this because they came here with the ultimate goal of colonizing. When they came to colonize, they had to justify a lot of the horrid actions they were involving themselves with, like, for example, rape and stealing. So this way of organizing themselves hierarchically as the main characters in their own story and the people of color they encountered as the enemies is what resulted in the perverse logic of coloniality. Not only did they perceive color as evil, they also perceived them as stupid or gente sin la capacidad de razonar or people who are not capable of reason. This gave them the upper hand to then come in and try to save them from themselves. This is directly related to how the first representations of people of color in media were through black face, red face, brown face, and yellow face. White actors believed that actors of color could not possibly be capable of an art form such as acting, so they would paint their faces and colors and portray the races because they believed that they were capable enough to do so and actors of color were simply not. Just to give you an idea of how eerily parallel this colonial history is to the history of US mass media. Well, going back to colonialism, the way they tried supposedly tried to save people of color from themselves was by taking the lands and doing what they believed were better things. Exploiting the lands, taking all the fruits, damaging the ecosystems for economic gains, while killing indigenous people or forcing them to move to confined areas that they were not used to being in, and many times having to face very harsh conditions and climates which helped push forth a different type of genocide or holocaust. The first colonies were built under this reality and over the blood, sweat, and tears of the colonized. Colonialism was an exploitation of human beings and the lands that they lived in for the benefit and growth of the European colonizer nations. The principle of free trade, for example, was born at this time. And of course, all this with very one-sided benefits and privileges. So let's recap by juxtaposing colonialism to coloniality. Colonialism is a literal occurrence that has happened and continued to happen within the span of over 500 years. 
The European colonial period began in the 16th century and it continues today both as physical overt colonialism and as ethereal or more invisibilized colonialism through processes of coloniality. Although the methods are invisible to the mind which has internalized it as normal, the effects are very overt and visible. But again, as you know today, people prefer to blame victims by saying that they're just not getting it together, that they're lazy, or just inherently stupid or organically criminal. Colonialism refers to the historical establishment, exploitation, maintenance, acquisition of territories within Asia, Africa, and the Americas with the expansion of Western epistemology. Epistemology means all that they believe to be knowledge or important enough to be considered knowledge. That's what that means, epistemology. Also, politics, religion, and economic organizations that, came, that then later became capitalism, as well as religious and racial overpower. The imposition of an entire cosmovision or worldview, where one epistemology came and took over as the one and true way of seeing the world. This way of seeing the world was applied then to all aspects of the colonized culture, rendering them inferior, unfit, underdeveloped, etc. So coloniality is the continuation of this hierarchical and dehumanizing organization. In other words, it is through a perverse logic cemented during colonization, the logic of coloniality that is still applied within the modern empire nations and over the rest of the world, where we divide everything and especially people into hierarchical categories of race, sex, gender, socioeconomic status, ethnicity, and that's just to begin because there are a lot more. These are the origins of why white Europeans are seen as the norm, while all non-white European descendants are seen as the others, and why our way of life, our first worldliness and its modernity, is portrayed as a universal and only natural and logical ultimate objective that some countries have just not been good enough to be able to attain. Colonialism and coloniality both generated direct effects on the relationships that Latin America has had with the United States. So now go ahead and read Augusto Monterroso's short story El Eclipse as an introduction to lim the limitations of the logic of coloniality. As I introduce you to the logic of coloniality, I also want you to see its weaknesses because after next week, when we go deeper into the details of global coloniality, the coloniality of power and coloniality within at least eight different societal hierarchies, I also want you to see that there is a solution and it is strictly based on these blind spots of coloniality. <laughs>